Okay, we're on page Tezvav on top, page 42 at the bottom. Okay, after the Imperic Tes, in the ninth Imperic, Dal Tereb explained the battle between Yetzir Tev and Yetzir Hara. Yetzir Tev wants, and he goes through the whole thing with Yetzir Tev wants, intellect, midday, thought, speech, and action, everything should only be godliness. Yetzir Hara wants the opposite, like we said, like the Zaina, the, the marshal of the harlot, but she also doesn't want the prince to sin because he's a prince. So now the Imperic Yud, Dal Tereb started saying like this, that when a person conquers the Yetzir Hara, and he gets rid of it, but he doesn't transform the evil to good. He's called Sadik Virali. A Sadik that has bad, a little bit, and Sadik She'eno Gomur, an incomplete Sadik. He says, What is the complete Sadik? The complete Sadik is not only one who destroys the Eight Sahara, but he actually transforms it to good. Okay, and we mentioned last week, just to mention it briefly. Because last week was a mix-up on the on the on the on, on the Zoom. In other words, if you killed it, how can you change it? How, how can you transform the Yetzirah if you killed it? The answer is you're only killing the evil of the Yetzirah. The attribute of love of the Yetzirah, what you're killing is loving evil that the Yetzirah does. But the attribute of love you're not killing, and therefore when you transform that love, in other words. What you Tzadik kills the evil desires of the Eight Sahara. But then what it does, it the love though is still there. But now he challenges that love to love Kedusha. Okay. So he says like this. Um, okay, you know, we're gonna start at the bottom of 28, and, and the bottom is page 40, four lines to the end of the page. Okay, so he says like this. So we need to explain this. In a tzaddik gomor, the definition of a complete tzaddik, he transformed his evil to good. Lochein, nekra tzaddik v'tevloi. He's called not only tzaddik gomor, there's two names for him. Tzaddik gomor and tzaddik v'tevloi. Not only is he a tzaddik, but he also has good. Meaning, how does he reach that level? By removing the evil garments, meaning all the evil things that the animal soul wants to do. And he says, what does it mean though? What is the Tzadik Gomor? And this is a very important thing that Altareb is explaining now. To actually despise evil of this world. The Tainugas bin the in the temptations that people have, Lamailis Taivas Aguf in the next page to fulfill the lots of his body, and not to serving Hashem. I'm going to explain this outside and then we're going to learn it inside. The Tzadik Sha'enoi Gomor, the incomplete Tzadik, kills his Yet Sahara. Why didn't he transform yet? The Yetzirah to the Yetzirah Tev. Why didn't he do it? Because he doesn't despise evil. Nobody in this room, we started talking about this last week. Nobody would kill, God forbid. Nobody would steal, God forbid. But when you hear somebody steal, stole, do you get sick? Do you despise evil in a way that it makes you sick? No. And Dr. Rebbe could explain in this page the following. There's holiness and there's evil. They are they're completely opposite one from another. If you love evil, you hate Kedusha. If you love Kedusha, you hate evil. And they're so connected that if you don't hate evil, you might not do it. You have no desire to do evil. You have no yet so hard to do evil. You don't even think about doing evil. But if you don't hate evil, that shows that you have a little bit of evil left in you. Because if you really loved God completely, you would hate evil completely. And they're interconnected. There's a big thing that Altareb is explaining over here. Loving God and loving world are opposites. If you love God, you cannot love world. If you love world, you cannot love God. 
If you hate world, then you can love Hashem. If you don't hate world, your love of Hashem is incomplete. Not that you don't love Hashem, it's incomplete. Meaning, if evil becomes repugnant and disgusting and it makes you sick, that's the level of a tzaddik gomu. Because that shows that he loves Hashem so much that anything that's against God, he hates. He despises. Worldly things of personal temptations and desires and falseness and all the bad midas that the world possesses, thank God, that is all contrary to Torah mitzvahs. Torah is emes. It's either emes or not. You don't have sometimes emes, then it's not emes. But Dr. Rebbe is explaining what's the difference between a tzaddik gomor or tzaddik v'tevlei or a tzaddik she'ena gomor, the incomplete tzaddik, which is another name for a tzaddik v'rale that has a little bit of evil. What evil does he have if he killed the Yetzirah? What's the tzaddik v'rale? Why is it gomor? He's called Eino Gomor because he doesn't love Hashem with the ultimate love. Because if he loved Hashem with the ultimate love, he would despise and hate anything evil. Not world, evil. He would hate evil. And therefore, the fact that he doesn't hate evil, that's the Raloi, the little bit of evil that the Tzaddik She'ena Gomor has. Meaning, Tzaddik She'ena Gomor, he's an incomplete Tzaddik because he doesn't love Hashem completely. And that's why he's called Tzaddik Virale. Why doesn't he Hashem, love Hashem completely? Because he has a little bit of evil. What is the little bit of evil that the Tzaddik has if he doesn't have a Yetzirah? The little bit of evil that the Tzaddik has is the fact that not only does he want to, he doesn't want to do evil. He has no connection to evil, but he doesn't hate it. He doesn't despise it. And if you don't hate evil, that shows you have a little bit of evil in you. And if you have a little bit of evil in you, then you can't love Hashem completely. So this is what the Alter Rebbe is explaining here, the definition of a tzaddik gomor and tzaddik she'ena gomor. And he says, we'll start from the second line of the top of Tezlov. Anything that comes from evil. A tzaddik gomor se'nei betachlos asino. He hates it with the ultimate hatred. Why? Because of his great love to Hashem. Again, God and evil are opposites. If you love God completely, then you hate evil completely. And if you don't hate evil completely, that means you don't love God completely. That's what it means. Because that means if you love Hashem, like the Tzadik Gamur, then you hate evil completely. And he says, why? And he says, Ki because good and evil are opposites. The like governor Melech says, Tachlisinasanasim about the evil people, evil things they did. I hated them with an ultimate hatred. There are enemies to me. Check out my heart and you'll see what I'm talking about. I have a question. Yeah. So, um, can you, um, okay, you can hate evil. I understand that. But can you respect evil because Hashem made it? <laughs> That's a very good question. But let me ask you a question. Hashem mm -hmm. created darkness. Mm -hmm. So should, should we never bring light into it? Because then light is going to be getting rid of them, something Hashem made. But what's the answer to your very good question? It's really a very good question. Hashem created darkness that we should light it up. Hashem okay. created evil that we shouldn't do it. Understand? Mm -hmm. Because the only time you appreciate light is when there's also darkness. Then you appreciate light over darkness. You can only do good if you have a choice to do bad. But if you don't want to, if you have no possibility to do bad, like an angel who has no 
Yetzirah, and he doesn't want to do anything bad. So when an angel does good, they're only programmed to do good. That's not rewarding. Hashem created evil that we shouldn't respect it. Hashem created darkness that we should light it up. Okay. Certain things Hashem created to use and certain things Hashem created to get rid of. Mm -hmm. very, very good question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So he says like this. And therefore, the more the tzaddik loves Hashem, <clears throat> so it is. The hatred is just the opposite. The more you love Hashem, the more you hate evil, despise evil. <clears throat> because hating this repugnancy, um, disgusting, is Now the Rebbe says like this, just like love is the opposite of hate, so the same thing, love and mius of repugnances is also opposite from, from one another. You know, contempt is just the opposite of love, like hatred is. And therefore, Hashem says, a tzaddik gomor has to love Hashem in such a way, in such a way that he despises evil. And then he could take the evil and make it into good. Then he could not only kill the Yitzhahara, which the tzaddik, the incomplete tzaddik does, he can actually transform the Yitzhahara to Yitzhahara because he hates evil completely and he loves Hashem so much. And he says, tzaddik she'ena gomor, what's the incomplete tzaddik? He doesn't hate evil completely. He doesn't hate evil with the ultimate hatred. Therefore, he doesn't despise evil. It doesn't make him sick. And therefore, the Rebbe says now, if you don't hate something, that means you're still connected to it. You still love it a little bit. Okay, That means the fact that you don't despise it shows you're still connected to it. You still have a little bit of love to it and enjoyment. And you didn't get rid of the garment, the evil garments completely. You still have it. Lochain, le nepach le teiv mamish. Therefore, the evil was not transformed to good. Because there's still a grasping in the impure garments of evil. But because he's a tzaddik, this connection to evil is extremely minimal. And therefore, the Altarev says like this. He is called tzaddik. Vera, he has a drop of evil. Loi, to him meaning... It's subjugated, it's subdued, it's completely bottled to the tzaddik. But the ra exists. He's called tzaddik she'enoi gomor because he's not complete in his love to Hashem. And therefore he has a little bit of evil that he doesn't despise evil. And that's why he's called two names. Tzaddik she'enoi gomor, the incomplete aspect of the tzaddik is the aspect that he doesn't love Hashem completely. And therefore, he's also called Tzadik Verale. He still has a little bit of evil. What's the evil that he has? The evil that he has is that he doesn't hate it. It's a, by the way, this is a super lofty level of a Tzadik. I mean, Halavai, we should be a Bainani. But the Tzadik is way, way up there. Even this level. Okay, so he says like this. Vine. Madregezu, this level of tzaddik veralei, again, the incomplete love of Hashem because he doesn't despise evil, that you can have infinite levels. How much he hates evil, how much he loves, how much he hates, how much he loves. You can have a little bit more love, a little bit less love, a little bit more hate, a little bit less hate. So all those things that, uh, you know, you have. And it's also mischalekes, the revavis madregis, there's infinite levels. How much evil is remaining 
from one of the four bad elements. Some Shane Gomor can have a little bit of evil Mayim left, evil earth left, the Ruach or Aish. He can have a little bit of a drop left. And how much the evil is nullified in him. Yes, it's nullified, but it could be uh, nullified like using, using a local terminology. It could be nullified one in 60 to the good, or one in a thousand, or one in the Vava means 10,000. So then you have many, many different levels. What are the levels? How much he loves Hashem and how much he hates evil. And that you can have a million levels, loving a little bit more, hating a little bit less. There's no a set amount. And therefore, he says, those are tzaddikim or rabbin, the many tzaddikim, shebachol hadeiris, in every generation, the Gemara says there's many tzaddikim. In fact, the Gemara says, Gemara says, tamneiset halfit tzaddik, 18,000 tzaddikim, kamek kamek kutshebrichu, exist before Hashem. It says there's 18,000 Righteous men standing in the presence of Hashem. Gemara and Sukkot and Sanhedrin. Because that you can have a lot of levels. How much? And how much How much he loves how much he hates. But. Achamay le tzaddik gomor. Concerning the ultimate level of a tzaddik. Meaning. He loves Hashem to the ultimate degree. And therefore he hates evil to the ultimate degree. And not only did he kill the eight Sahari, he transformed it to Kedusha. That's what Rashbi said. Shim ben Yechoi says, no, isi aliyah, I see the men of great elevation. And he's going to explain what that means. The Mu'atim. And they're very few. And therefore, the Gemara continues with the, the Gemara Dal Trebbe quoted in the first paragraph of Tanya, this Gemara. Hashem saw that the ultimate tzaddik gomor is going to be very few throughout history. So Hashem planted them a few in each generation. And as al it says in the middle of Parak Aleph, that's what it says, tzaddik yaseid elam. There could be sometimes one tzaddik. In fact, that's the famous Gemara that Rav Shem ben Yochai said to his son, he said to his son, Rabbi Lazar, Rashbi said to his son like this, if there's two tzaddikim in this generation, it's me and you. If there's one, it's me. Because this level of a tzaddik is a level that's so super high that he loves Hashem to such an extent that evil actually makes him sick. He despises it to the extent that makes him sick. Why wasn't that ego on Rabbi Shem ben Yechoi's part? So we learned already, Rabbi Shem ben Yechoi knew exactly who he was. His modest, he knew he was Rashbi. He knew he wrote the Zayat. He knows he was the highest level of Tzaddikim. He knew he was the Neshama Meishe Rabbeinu. But Rashbi thought if somebody else would be given my ability, that they would even be greater than me. But Rashbi knew he was the Rebbe of his generation. There are many tzaddikim in the time of Rashbi Shem Yechoi. All his colleagues, Rameh, Rabbi Yisir, Rabbi Yehuda, many, many colleagues of Rabbi Shem Yechoi. But Rabbi Shem Yechoi said to his son, I see there are very few. If there's two, it's me and you. If there's one, it's me. Because that level is a super level to me. And he calls him B'nai Aliyah. And he says, now that the Rebbe is going to say, at least we'll start one of them. Why are they called B'nai Aliyah? B'nai Aliyah means children of elevation. What is this Aliyah? He says, B'nai Aliyah. Therefore, they're called B'nai Aliyah. What's this expression, B'nai Aliyah? Shemahapchim hara. They transform the evil. Umailin Aisi Le Kedusha and they elevated to Kedusha. So he says the first definition of B'nai Aliyah means they elevate. What do they elevate? They elevate the evil to Kedusha. That's the Tzadigam. They elevate the evil to Kedusha. 
not only do they get rid of it, but they actually despise it to such an extent they love Hashem completely and they completely have no existence of evil anymore. And he says, Kid Isa Bezayar Bagdama, and he says in the introduction of the Zayar, Shadatsa Raj Rabihia, Lalis the Hecha Rab Shim Ben Yochoi. In the introduction of Zayar, it says the following. When Rabhiya, the famous Rabhiya was a disciple of Rabbi Yudah Nasi, wanted to go up to the chamber in Ganeiden of Rab Shimon Bayuchoi, wanted to go up to his chamber. Shama Kalanafik, the Bhia heard a voice that came out and said like this: Man Manchun, who could come before coming here? In other words, what's the criteria for you to come here? Um um ones who transformed darkness to light or the time of Merila Miska and bitter taste into sweetness. And the voice came out and said, If you're not, add if you're not that level, don't come to the chambers of Rab of Shimba Yachoy. In the, the, the ticket to get into the chamber of the of the chamber of Hashem and Yochai is only somebody that actually transformed evil to good, and therefore they're called Bnei Aliyah. What does Aliyah mean? Elevate. What are they elevating? Good is elevating. What is Bnei Aliyah? Bnei Aliyah is they're elevating the bad to good. That's a tzaddik gamur. Now, the Alter Rebbe says a second interpretation of B'nai Aliyah. And this is even a higher level of B'nai Aliyah. B'ay, Nikro, and B'nai Aliyah, another reason why they called B'nai Aliyah superior men, M'pnei Shagam, Avedas, and B'china, Sasei, Tayyip. B'kiyim, Hatayr, and this is what we're reading now is a really super high level. He says, their Avedas, they're serving Hashem. In Asay Teiv, the Kiem Teiro Mitzvah, in the fulfillment of Teiro and its mitzvahs, is Letzerach Gavaya, is only for the sake of God. Umayla Mayla Adrema Mayla is to the highest of levels. Vuloi Kadei Ladafka Bei Yisbar, and not for them to cling to Hashem, to quench their thirst to Hashem. And let me explain what Alter Rebbe is saying over here. The second interpretation of Bnei Aliyah means. Whatever they do is for Aliyah, meaning for Hashem. They're not doing it for themselves. Meaning, the Tzadik Gomor doesn't serve Hashem because his Neshama wants to connect and he has a thirst and a desire to become closer to Hashem. And because he wants to become closer to Hashem and therefore he serves Hashem. No, that's very great level. But that's not what B'nai Ali is. B'nai Ali is, he does it because this is what Hashem wants. Nothing to do with me. And Dr. Rebbe is going to explain, and it's late, and again, once again, next two Wednesdays, there's no halachic and tanya, because next two Wednesdays. This coming Monday is a class, and the following Monday not. But this Monday there's a class. But the next two Wednesdays, so let me just finish the point Dr. Rebbe says. A person does it because this is what Hashem wants us to do. Nothing for myself. There's nothing in it for me as far as they're concerned. They don't need to have something in it for me. Not even the spiritual connection that they have with Hashem. They're just not interested. What does that mean? Now, today we're going to explain the end of this chapter. And I'll try to make it, uh, explain as much as I'm able to in the few minutes we have left. The purpose of Torah mitzvahs, we say in davening, and many people say it before they do a mitzvah. We say, L'shem yichud We say this in Chabad before Baruch Shem Abideh. The purpose of the mitzvah is to unite Kodesh Baruch Hu and Shechimba. If you translate it literally, it means to unite God with God. 
Okay. What does that mean? So again, we're just going to start it today, and Mr. Shema remember in a few weeks to continue this aspect because it's fundamental. When we do things, Hashem reacts. But it has to start from us. In other words, when we do mitzvahs, what actually happens is we're causing, because we are connecting to Hashem by doing the mitzvah, then Hashem connects to us. And it becomes a unity between God and us. Kodesh Baruch Hu in Chassidus in Kabbalah says, refers to the six spheres of Atzilus, Chesed, Vore, Tiferes, Natsachad, Yisait. Shechina comes to a Shochein. It rests in the lower worlds. Shechina represents the level of God that's in the world. Kodesh Baruch Hu is a level of godliness that has nothing to do with the world. But God doesn't want to be removed from the world. God doesn't want to be remote from the world. Why did Hashem create the world? Because he wanted a dwelling place down here. Meaning Hashem wants to be here. Now, if there's a level of Hashem which is completely removed from the world, and then there's a level of God that's in the world, how do we connect the two? So, so this explains, when we do a mitzvah, we become closer to Hashem. It's called Isarusa de Lasata, an awakening from below. When we look at God, like in the reflection of the mirror, then Hashem looks back at us. In order, now, you can have a male and a female, separately, they cannot produce children. In order for male and female to produce, there has to be a unity between male and female. The level of God, which is above world, is called male. Our level of godliness is called female. In order for God to reveal himself in the world more, there has to be a unity between us and Hashem. And therefore, when a Jew does a mitzvah, what happens is, we are causing the unity between the higher level of God above world and the lower level of God, which is in the world, to join. And what happens? God reveals himself more in the world. So why are the B'nai, again, I'm going to have to go over this again when we go back. But what's the B'nai Aliyah doing? He's not doing it because my soul is thirsty. I want to be closer to God. No, because that's not what, that's what you want. That's not what Hashem wants. Hashem wants to reveal himself down here. And the way Hashem is revealing himself down here is by us doing mitzvahs. So the whole Aved of the Tzadik Gomor is, I'm going to do something because Hashem wants. What does he want to come down here? It has nothing to do with me. It's not because I'm thirsty and therefore I'm going to go drink some water. Hashem wants to come into the world and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, once again, the class tonight is sponsored for the full Shlema for David Ben Adasa to have a full Shlema. The message yeah. on Monday night to give me a class. The next two Wednesdays is no class. Thank Everybody you. have a good Chaydish tonight. Tomorrow is a Chaydish. Have a good Chaydish. And thank you. Everything should thank go you. up.